Hey everyone, welcome back to the Runaways YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to help people prepare for the road to Nets or for in the future, just outsiders draft in general, uh, by focusing on how to best draft ninja, if that's the direction your draft goes. Uh, I'm joined with Flesh and Blood superstar and teammate Lucas Oswald. How you doing, Lucas? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. Excited to talk Outsiders draft. Um, how many drafts have you done, you think, roughly? Um, probably somewhere around 40, 50 by this point. Oh, that's pretty maybe good. Maybe. Yeah, I think I'd estimate like 30 for me, maybe 40. Um, but you're a pretty big uh, ninja believer in draft, right? Yeah, yeah, big ninja fan. For sure, for sure. I guess before we go into like card specifics, what do you think is like? Why do you like ninja? Like, what's the what's the power of ninja in draft? Uh, well, it's a few things. Uh, first of all, I think Kadachis are the best weapons in the format. Um, spiders bites are obviously quite powerful as well, but Kadachi is letting you convert extra resources uh, into damage is incredibly powerful, especially with things like uh, Springload or Humble or things like that. Um, and then also uh, being able to use big four to five card hands more effectively than basically every other class uh, is pretty nice. A lot of other classes just kind of have to play, you know, in kind of weird ways when they have big hands, you know, like double spider spite. Um, but Benji and Katsu get to use big hands pretty, pretty easily. Yep, totally agree. And I think you have like less things to balance in the draft than some other classes like yeah. your main thing is getting enough three blocks and blue zeros yep. and then just power cards yep yep you just take the best card in every pack yeah it's pretty sweet cool so we'll we're going to talk through kind of the the key cards for ninja to start and then we'll kind of break down difference between benji and katsu and like how to decide which direction to go which hero to play and then we'll try and talk to like the ratios of what you want in your deck. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll go through equipment first. Um, we have these kind of categorized by equipment slot and then like highest priority pick from left to right. Um, so we'll go to the top. So we have three helmets that we can potentially get in the draft. Um, I mean, Mask of Many Faces is like definitely like super high priority, I think, for Katsu. I think Benji likes it, but like, I, I don't mind yeah. sacking that pick and like getting a Mask of Shifting Perspectives yeah, later. What do you mm. think? Uh, I'm actually pretty high on Mask of Many Faces in Benji. Um, one specific thing that's really good is if you can manage to get a uh, Red Descendant Gust Wave, uh, you can basically build your own looking for a scrap uh, with Mask of Many Faces. Um, and so you don't need to uh you know take a surging strike and you don't need to draw them together it can it can be just a power turn as soon as you draw the descendant gust wave uh but i definitely agree i'm higher on mask of many faces in uh katsu than i am in benji because in katsu it very rarely blocks one whereas in benji a lot of the time it's just there to block and you know maybe you can get a good turn with it makes sense yeah what do you think the best like mask of many faces targets are obviously the surging line you mentioned what else are you looking mm -hmm. to do with it uh, Outside of the surging line, uh, there's some cute stuff you can do with Benji in particular with one-two punch. Um, getting through a yellow one-two punch, uh, even on turn zero with Mask of Many Faces can be pretty gross. Uh, you know, you can have some lines where you go, for example, uh, you know, uh, some unblockable attack that triggers Benji, and then you pop your mask and you play your next attack. Uh, as head jab, and then you finish off with a yellow or blue one two punch. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can leak three to four damage on turn zero, which is incredibly powerful. Uh, also, sometimes back heel kick can just get plus two from the Mask of Many Faces on a Benji trigger or on a Twin Twisters, uh, or not Twin Twister, excuse me, uh, short and sharp. Um, so, yeah. those are like the biggest use cases for Mask of Many Faces outside of the Surging Strike line. Yep, seems yeah. good. Uh, yeah, I think for shifting perspectives, it's in most cases literally just the block one, uh, which is great. Mm -hmm. I think like block ones are super good in this format. Um, mm -hmm. And then seekers is like 
you couldn't get a mask for some reason and this yeah. card tabled and you're like pretty happy that you got a free hat. Yeah, it's pretty low priority. Uh, one thing about shifting perspectives is if you're playing Katsu, it can like, or either deck, but the mulligan I think is more relevant in Katsu because you can try to search for a, a zero cost card that you might not have to discard mm -hmm. your hero power. Uh, but usually it is just block one. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, I've, I've definitely yeah, resolved the attack reaction ability on it, but it, it's yeah, it primarily there to block one. It's pretty sweet that it is an attack reaction and not a an action, so your opponent doesn't know when you're going to pop it. Yep, agreed. All right, moving on to chests. Uh, this is a pretty important slot, probably the most important, right? The Sokunji um, in both decks is very good, but I think in Benji it's like insanely yeah. powerful. If you want to speak to some of the the fun things you can get up to with it. Yeah, so if Mask of Many Faces plus Red Descendant Gust Wave is Build Your Own looking for a scrap, then Sokunji plus uh, Red Deadly Duo is Build Your Own Red Scar for a Scar. Um, that combo specifically is incredibly powerful in Benji. Um, Silken giving you the kind of double double whammy of not only making your card cost less, but also you most of the time you're popping it, making your attack unblockable, can just give you like incredibly uh, high points that you wouldn't otherwise get. Um, things like Twin Twister or Deadly Duo that get even better when they hit. Uh, get obviously even even better with Silken Gi because they be can become unblockable. Um, but also, worst case scenario, it's just a free resource, uh, which is obviously you know you lose a point of value. But if it means you can play you know an extra two for six or a one for five um, when you know maybe you're you're tight on resources, it can be really convenient. Yep, totally agree. Yeah, totally. yeah and once I know like I'm playing Ninja, I'm taking these as early as I have to, basically. Yeah, yeah. Especially if I've already seen one, then I'll, I'll probably take it over at almost anything. Um, yeah. Since we're making cards at home, uh, I think Tunic's like a very reasonable replacement for the Silken if you can't get it. Um, mm -hmm. You can't do the cute stuff, but like you can make your own Lava Burst for at home if you have... Um, I can't think of the name. The Pocket Snake in Arsenal. Scrolling Spring over. Load. Spring Load in Arsenal. Yeah. Um, it's just make your own lava burst, yeah. which is pretty Another, good. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Another thing that's good about Silken Gi is if you take them early, uh, Red Deadly Duo wheels basically every time because that yeah. card's really bad without Silken Gi. Uh, so you can usually feel pretty comfortable that you'll get something to combo with it um, on the go. Yep, makes sense. Yeah. And then the Seeker's Chest the Seeker's is chest. a lot like the Hood, but I think you're even sadder if this is the chest you end up with. Um, but if it tables and you don't have to waste a pick on it, you're pretty happy that you got something. Okay, moving on to gloves. So this is the most, like, I think all the gloves are actually pretty good and close across the board. There's a bit of an anomaly with the legendary flick knives. Um, yeah, you want to talk to the flick knives a little bit if you get lucky and pull one. Yeah. If, if you can manage to get a flick knives, uh, that's pretty great. Um, it's basically just three life on a stick. Uh, usually it'll only actually give you two life because it'll either deal two or it'll deal one and block one. Uh, but specifically in a hero like Benji, it's just phenomenal. Benji's biggest strength is that once your opponent gets into the lower health totals, you often just win the game because you can attack them with unblockable attacks and they'll die. Flick Knives uh, just increases the speed of the game and gets you into that position quicker. Um, in addition to blocking one, uh, which in this format is absurd. That'll often give you like two to three points of value. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Flick Knives is uh, is definitely a bomb. If you get it early, you probably want to be in Benji. But even if you're in Katsu, it's still phenomenal. It's still a block one that will usually deal a damage uh, and just lets you kill your opponent out of nowhere. So yeah, pretty great card. Makes sense. Um, one thing we forgot to mention for the masks, um, they're pretty, like, outside of many faces. Like, the other one is pretty low priority because every class has access to one or more one block equipment in that slot. Um, which segues to Blade Cuff, I think, is a super high pick because it's the only, I think, it's the only one block the only equipment, one block. right? For any of the classes. Uh, well, for Assassin and Ninja, rather. 
At arms, you mean? Yeah, in the arm slot. Yes, yeah. The the masks are, like you were saying, they're much uh, easier to get, usually, because there's also Mask of Malicious Manifestations. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Ranger hat, too. Yes, and the Ranger hat. So people will often already have a hat, but the gloves slot is a lot more um, difficult to fight over, so if you can get a blade cuff, it's, it's pretty sweet. Um, yeah. And I think in this format in particular, it's really important to get your first piece of blocking equipment. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, because a lot of games, your opponent will be able to kind of like take a risky line uh, because they're, they're for attack as an on hit that'll, you know, deal an extra couple damage. So their for attack can basically turn into a, uh, you know, like a zero for five or a, a, however many resources for five or six um, because you have to block with two cards. But if you have a blocking equipment, they can't do that. So I think the, the first piece of blocking equipment is pretty important. Um, yep. And having blade cuff early is great. Definitely. Agree. Yeah, I think it's reasonable to like first pick blade cuff. I, I don't want to usually, but like there, there are definitely packs where I would. Yep, it's fine. Uh, have you ever resolved the ability? Um, no, but I've seen people do it. Um, I mean, I could definitely see it coming up if you have a lot of blues in hand and they don't all have go again. Uh, mm-hmm. Kadachi for two is better than Kadachi for one, so sinking two resources to deal two damage is a pretty good, like, worst use case for a card. Yep, makes sense. Um, so Fisty Cuffs are more, I think, uh, kind of like threat of activation kind of thing, um, mm-hmm. especially as Katsu. Like, every attack you're threatening to buff and search your combo card um if you can hold on to them for the whole game when your opponent's low they're like effectively minus one health for like how they have to use their cards um yeah i don't know anything else for that no i think fisticuffs is fine um i think it's weaker in ninja than in most other classes because for the other classes, one of the biggest strengths of Fisty Cuffs is you can pitch a blue to play a one cost, and even if you don't have anything to do with the extra resources, uh, you can pop the Fisty Cuffs. Um, specifically in uh, Ranger, I think this comes up. Um, but Ninja doesn't really have that problem because you have Kadachis. Okay, we are back from the brief interruption. Um... Yeah, yep, we were so... talking about uh, Seekers, Mitts, and Fisticuffs. I think I think they're pretty close. Um, I think the the difference is like if you have a peace of mind, I want Seekers, Mitts, and if I don't have a peace of mind, I probably want Fisticuffs. Yep, makes sense. And if you, I, I think you actively want Seekers, Leggings. I don't think they're like super high priority, but if you have them, I think pairing the second Seekers if you don't have a peace of mind is pretty good too. Yep, it's great against Benji. You can convert. Zero blocks. Pretty good. Yep. Okay. And then finally, we have the boots. Um, I think finally, we have the case where Seekers is the superior equipment yes. in the slot. Yeah. Ironically enough, I think Ninja might be close to the worst class with Fleetfoot sandals, which is weird. Um, but I think it's it's only real use cases when you have a lot of really bad zero or uh, zero cost blues stuff mm-hmm. like uh, you know back heel kick and one two punch or feisty locals, and you are forced to play them instead of do anything else with them. But that's like basically a mythical situation and only comes up on turn zero, um, and yeah, it's it's they're they're, they're pretty bad. I mean, I do think the, the turn zero case is pretty real, though, because you can go, like, zero for two starter into zero for one, go again into zero for two. It, it, it definitely comes up, but I think I would much rather have the Seeker's equipment. I agree. Um, I don't think I'm even, like, picking the Fleetfoot Sandals if it's fed to me as, like, the only playable card. Or if yeah, it's like that or, like, a blue one cost. Yeah, I like, think... Like, it's very would, low for me. Uh, yeah, I think the only route I, I would take Fleetfoot Sandals over cards that are bad for my opponents um, and over cards that I would never put in my deck. But if there's a card that I might yeah. put in my deck or if there's a card that my opponents will use, then I will probably take the, you know, the not Fleetfoot Sandals card. Yeah, 
I agree. I, I'd say like seventy percent of your games, you won't even resolve them if you have them or activate them. Oh, I, I think it's I think it's a lot more than that actually. Yeah. I think that's fair. I guess if you have like three blue feisty locals, maybe maybe you prioritize fleet foot sandals a little bit, but just it's it's pretty weak. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, so let's move on to kind of the key cards that Ninja is looking to draft. Um, mm -hmm. We have it sectioned off. We'll, we'll break those down. I think we'll start with cards that are good in both ninjas, and then we'll kind of talk to um, the more hero-specific ones. Uh, so at the top, we have what we consider to be like the bomb cards um, yeah. for both. Um, I yeah, think I you, you can kick it off. I I think uh, Red Descendant Gustwave is the best ninja card in the set. Um, mm -hmm. I think in Katsu, it's obvious why it's so great. Um, it's tutorable. It's zero for five with go again, which is a, an absolutely ridiculous rate. Um, it goes very well with surging strikes. It's great. And then even in Benji, um, it combines extremely well with Mask of Many Faces. Mm -hmm. And typically in Benji, I want one surging strike, maybe two if I have multiple ascending gust waves, but you can definitely get that descending gust wave off without um, the mask. Yeah, uh, I think it's much better with the mask. It's super but... good with um, yellow be like water too, right? Oh, yeah. Effectively oh, yeah. becomes red looking for scrap at that point, which is yep. the best card yeah. in the set, anyway, maybe. Any way you can put more looking for scraps in your deck is great, and descending gust wave is often looking for a scrap and is often looking for a scrap that costs zero. So it's just yep. if you see that. I think it's it's a ninja signal. If you're receiving it, ninja's probably open. If you're passing it, ninja's probably not open to your left. Agreed. Yeah, I think the red surging is really interesting in Benji. I think early on in the format, I was like pretty anti any surgings, but it's just like a, a very reasonable rate in this format. Yep. yep. So I'm like, yep, yeah, I like very actively want one in my deck and usually get to play two, but I definitely don't want more than two. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh it's like I was saying earlier, like one of the strengths of ninja is you get to convert extra resources into one damage, usually. Um so things like surging strike become a lot better. You know, two for five with go again in uh assassin or um ranger is much weaker than it is in ninja. Um yeah, okay. so it's a big thing that threatens Benji, even in Benji, so it's fine. Because it'll often be two for six, which is great. Yep. And in Katsu it like represents Digging for Gust Wave, which is super yeah, scary. They're ridiculous in Katsu. <laughs> they're, they're so good. At it's, you just like, have to block it, I think. Yes, yes. All right. Moving on to maybe the best generics in the set. I'd say probably. Um, let's do Scrap first, because I think it's a little more obvious. Um, I think a lot of people have this as like the best rare or lower card in the set. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people are high on Death Touch, but I think looking Oh, scrap, sure. Yeah, I forgot Death Touch. I agree. Best generic, we can... we'll say that. Um, I mean, in Ninja, it's like super easy to trigger the plus one and go again. Um, other decks, sometimes you have to be a bit patient, but you should have a decent amount of targets here. Um, I don't know, just a ridiculous rate, right? One for five go again. Yeah, it's like it's one for five with go again. And unlike other cards that are super above rate, there's like no cost to it. The, the worst case scenario is it's a one for four, yep. which is not even that bad. Like, it's not amazing, but it's it's pretty reasonable. I mean, it's a and, card we pick highly already, like a one for four finisher yeah. as Ninja. A one for four is perfectly reasonable. The fact that it can be a one for five with go again with minimal effort is absurd. Agreed. Uh, I will say it, it also, it blocking is not irrelevant. A lot of cards of that, of that caliber mm -hmm. will not block. I, I blocked with it all three times. I drew it in the first draft of day one of the Pro Tour, and it was perfectly reasonable. <laughs> Would I like to play it, but <laughs> yep, like it, it blocks, which is fine. Makes sense. All right, I'm going to let you talk about Spring Load. All right, so Spring Load is the best card in the game, uh, and let me tell you why. So um, Ninja is a class that wants finishers, you look at all of the other classes, and basically none of their cards have go again, uh, for the most part. Obviously, Arachne gives things go again, and you know some things will have go again, but most of their cards don't have go again. So most of the rates that other classes are going to be looking at, um, 
do not require, or sorry, uh, do require your action point. But Ninja kind of has the reverse problem, where all of your cards uh, have go again. And so most of them will be slightly behind what an average rate would be um, because they have go again on them. So it's really important to have finishers. And Springload is just the best finisher that you can get because it goes so well with your Kadachis um, and because it is more flexible than most of the other finishers. Um, the two for sixes are good, but they're not super flexible with things like Surging Strike uh, or Be Like Water. But Springload is basically always one for five and is just a better rate than most of the other cards in your deck. Um, also, in Benji specifically, it combines very well with Short and Sharp and Deadly Duo, um, because all colors of Spring Load uh, have two base power, so it'll get buffed by those. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think the Benji synergy is like off the charts with this card. It's, it's so ridiculous how good it is. You can also just like swing it for two, turn zero, and get some damage yep. through. Which yep. Doesn't come up a whole lot, but it happens. Yeah, I think it's funny in our testing we we're relating this to Critical Strike from last format, which was like a reasonable card because it box three, <laughs> and this is like just strictly worse, other than the the Benji synergy, and it's like it okay, feels so like such a bomb in the set. Yeah, like it's it's kind of ridiculous. Like when you're getting fed these, like it feels it feels so good. Yeah, the only time they're awkward if you get too many and like you draw two, um, and like your arsenal's already clogged. Yeah, but that's yeah, like a pretty it, narrow case. I, I've had it come up. I've had like four to five spring load decks before. Um, yeah, but it's fine. Yeah, just okay. block two and move on. Yeah, I had I had that come up uh, again at at the pro tour where I had four of them in my deck and I drew three of them in the same hand and it was a little scary, but it ended up all right. Yeah, if if your if your biggest weakness for a card is that there are like it's bad when you drop too many of them, like that's fine. Like that's agreed. Agreed. That's a weakness for a card. Yeah. Okay. So I'm actually gonna start on the bottom for the other key cards with our blues and our three blocks. Mm -hmm. Um. So we kind of alluded to it a bit in the beginning, but the biggest kind of like hole you could have in your ninja deck is not enough three blocks. And basically if you don't draw the nuts every turn, you kind of get ran over because you can't trade efficiently on defense. Even if you do draw the nuts. Yeah, sometimes. and you don't go second, you can still just lose. Um, yeah, like this format, yeah. I think it's really important to have like one card that is actively good at blocking for the turn and like a second card that you can block with if needed. Mm -hmm. That's like the typical play pattern that I see. Um, and if you have like a 0 for 4 or something to play off of a resource chest, that's even better. So you have like the 3 card block option. Um, so the, the come to fights and the give and take are just that. There, there's basically no 3 block I wouldn't play in a ninja deck ever. Um, it could say like you lose the game if you play it, and I would still play it because it's just blocking. Yep. Um, the come to fights get the bonus of um, letting you ignore spider's bites if you play against assassin, um, which is pretty relevant. You're not usually going to cast them as ninja, um, but that's fine. Yeah. Just three blocks are great. Yeah, you also basically can't block spider spikes with this deck. Uh, yeah, exactly. Just, like, yeah. You you can usually only afford to block with one, maybe two cards. So, like having a way to bypass that is pretty important. No, that's true. The ninja game plan specifically is like usually block with one card, throw the rest. And come to fight is like second best to like the the blue zero majestics that are reactions and non attacks. Yep, yep. Um, which is our next category, I believe. These are your zero cost blues that block for three. Um, these are like pretty yeah. high priority picks. They're like bread and butter. Yeah. They let you play the game basically. Um. Yeah, it also, it looks like there are a lot more than there are. Um, of these eight cards, five of them are Majestics, and one of them's a rare. So yep. they, these are actually incredibly high priority and are not that common. Um, Agreed. You, you, you want to be taking these when you see them. Yeah, and like one two-punch specifically is very good okay. as Benji, because you can get the Benji buff okay. and still have two unblockable that ends up oh, hitting yeah. for four. Yep, it's phenomenal. Yep, so very high priority. I probably take finishers first and like super high power cards, but these are like right right after that. Yeah. 
One one nice thing about Ninja is um, a lot of the times the games don't go super long. Uh, so you can kind of afford to prioritize ratios and consistency over bombs um, because you're usually doing more powerful things than your opponent. Um, the, the easiest way to lose with Ninja is to just kind of putter out and you know not draw zero cost blue or you know not draw any three blocks. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm a lot of the time I'm actually taking uh, these blue three blocks over um, even like actual bombs. Um, usually not the four cards that we mentioned, but some of the really good strong cards that we'll see later. Yeah, it's reasonable. Um, with like how hard to get these are, I do want to note that like. If you find your deck is lacking three blocks, like you have like less than eight, um, you probably want a game plan that like you're going to take the tempo and you're going to hold it, and yeah. you just have to draw well. And if you do, you'll probably still win. If you don't, you probably couldn't win anyway because you can't block efficiently. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah. Well, so we'll get this to this more with Benji, but uh, like the Benji floor is made mm-hmm. much better blocks which we'll we'll explain when we get to benji but three blocks are very important makes sense so next category these we're considering uh again blues that cost zero um turn on your kadachis but these are like your your good cards that don't block for three um (laughs) be like water and head jab are like you don't usually want to have to play them but they're pretty reasonable too they turn on other synergies um they're definitely a bit better in Benji than Katsu. Um, I when will, you get to I like, will... go ahead. Yeah, no god. I would say when you get to like end game loops, like it's just another card from hand. Uh, when they're mm-hmm. at one. Yeah, I I actually think blue be like water is quite good in Katsu, mm-hmm. um, especially like I said earlier, if your opponent does not have the first piece of blocking equipment, um, yep. it threatens two on hits with it, and. If you can pay the resource and have a zero cost card in hand, you're threatening to get a uh, usually a red descendant gust wave, um, but it can be anything. Um, so it's actually it's actually kind of funny. I've had, I've seen a lot of people be forced to block blue be like water, um, and if your opponent is blocking your blue card and they're not at one, uh, that's a pretty great card. So yeah, no, I agree. Even if they do have uh a one block equipment like you're probably getting it there like 90 percent of the time oh yeah oh, unless yeah, they just have like a two block that they have nothing better to do with <laughs> um yeah so for the other two yeah. hurl is a pretty spicy one um i think a lot of people know about this but it's just a great kadash enabler or the late game because it's blue you're it's pitch stacking every time uh yep. it's just one unblockable damage to close yep especially in top two. yeah like when you have a hurl in your deck, like your opponent can't go to like three, kind of, which is nice. It kind of gives Katsu that like Benji type feel where your opponents can't go low because then they're Kadashi locked and then get hurled. So, yep, pretty sweet. exactly. And then Infectious Host, uh, the base rate is like not great. It's pretty good in, in uh, Benji, rather. Like you're happy to play Zeros so that deal too. Um, but the upside is absurd. Like, <laughs> you could get eight points of value from this zero cost blue potentially if you value each token um, yeah, yeah. at two. It's yeah, it it's will the... often be zero for four at blue though, which is great. Yeah, it's yeah. not like a, a high pick by any means, but I'm like super happy if I can get this on like mm-hmm. probably once we're in the wheel, like pick pick nine or later. I'm like mm-hmm. thrilled to see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then last we have. Blue cards that cost zero, so we can use our Kadachis. And that is what these are used for. Um, yeah, there's like some narrow use cases outside of it. I think Seek Horizon and Benji gets a little bit of a plus just for being two base attack. Um, yep. Um, yeah, they, these all have like random use cases, but they're 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 Kadachi enablers. Like that's what they're there for. Yeah, I think these are good signals that Ninja is open. If you're seeing these at the end of pack one, um, and you like start a ninja, I think it's like uh, kind of reinforces that you made the right choice. Um, yeah, there's just cards you hope to wheel, and yeah, it's you're also, probably going to play some number of these in your ninja deck every draft. Yep, they're also a, a pretty nice way to like map out how many ninja drafters are at the table. Mm-hmm. Um, 
because uh, specifically, this is like a very narrow case, but it actually comes up basically every draft. Um, if you're a ninja and it's pack two, um, if you pass, let's say you look at a pack and there's a red ninja card, a yellow Benji card, and a blue zero, and you take the yellow Benji card, if you see the blue zero come back and there weren't any like very good generics, you can be pretty safe in the assumption that there's only one other ninja at the table. Um, which then in pack three can be useful information with wheeling other things. Um, mm -hmm. uh, having that information on how many other ninjas are at the table is pretty key. And these are like, like the biggest tells for that because these cards are very good. Yeah. Um, but they're pretty close to unplayable in like every other. Yeah, I was class. about to say that other than like Seek Horizon, like zero for two as a blue is like. Basically. Like we played that in our constructed fight deck, right? Yeah. I guess if, if they're but... wheeling, though, if they're wheeling, like yeah. almost certainly there's, you know, if, if they're wheeling over other cards, like there probably is not another ninja. I agree. Okay, so moving on, we'll talk about some of the like ninja starters. Um, both heroes have similar play patterns. Like you just did go again attacks, right? Like. Both decks want yeah. to lead with a breakpoint if they can with Go again uh, or Kodachi's and then do some other ninja stuff. Um, yeah. The, I, yeah the, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I think the five of these are like almost the same card. Like they're all just like one for fours yeah. with Go again. Um, uh, Descending Gust Wave is, yeah. uh, is a different role. But yeah, the I other agree. cards are basically, they all do the same thing. Uh, they're a little different. Um, I'd say Headleads Tail is probably the weakest one um, because it uh, doesn't like do anything past like one for four. Um, and I'd say Spinning Wheel Kick is probably the strongest one because it can be searched by Katsu. And if you combo it, it can go above one for four. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they're all, they're all quite similar. Uh, one thing that you were kind of alluding to is like the beginning and the end of the chains for both classes are often just the same. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the starters and the finishers are both classes are going to want pretty similar cards. The only real difference uh, in the middle game, usually between the two classes, is the cards that are coming in the middle, whether it's, you know, you're trying to surging strike combo or whether you're just trying to play like yellow cards that have on hits. Agreed. And like, ideally, you have a breakpoint to start, like, Anything's fine just to force the block, but it's like Benji's presenting a plus one if his first attack hits, and then Katsu's presenting his ability to tutor a combo card, which are both scary. Um, yep. One other thing yeah, for the Gust Wave is it's just a, uh, a one for two go again as Benji, which is unblockable, which is nice for closing out the game or dealing yep. aggressive it's chip. Play it's playable. Yeah. All right, so moving on, keeping in line with starters, these are our uh, zero cost starters in the middle here. Um, these tend to get picked pretty early. I think, like, Be Like Water, Head Jab, I think pretty obvious. They're just great starters. Be Like Water is a bit more threatening. Head Jab um, has a lot of synergies that don't require it to hit. Um, I think people's evaluations of bleed out are like diverse like i don't think everyone agrees yeah. i think it's like a bomb in ninja it's weird i think it's much better in katsu than it is in benji um yep katsu typically wants to play bigger hands and starting off with kadachi kadachi into bleed out is where it's strongest um but if you're benji um a lot of the time your opponent will just block your kadachi yeah it's the only yeah, thing they can block right anything else um which it, it's good value if they're blocking your kadachis but bleed out is best when you know it's going to be for uh, a zero for four um and so i think it's better in katsu also uh threatening the on hit is better in katsu because like i said they usually keep bigger hands um and so benji will often not have a card in hand after swinging this um mm -hmm. And so if you don't have a card in hand, the on hit of your hero doesn't matter. Uh, whereas Katsu usually blocks a little worse and keeps bigger. And so he's more incentivized. Your opponent's more incentivized to block the bleed out, um, which makes it stronger, I think. 
Yep, no, that's reasonable. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it has, yeah. like, especially in Benji, it has diminishing returns of it. Um, where, like, you need, you want to have the option to arsenal it if they are blocking your Kadachis. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have exactly one, like, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, cool. It's also, like, if only one Kadachi hits, which I think is reasonable to expect so, most of the time, it's, again, just that one for four finisher that we're thrilled to play in Ninja anyway. Yeah, it's just like the cards we were talking about at the bottom there, with like the Headleaf's Tail and the Twin Twister and all that, it's just the same thing. Like, it's just one for four. Yep. It's different, but it's the same. And we haven't gone there yet, but it uh, pairing Short and Sharp finally makes you like your Kadachis, or playing it on your Kadachis uh, very good. Yep. Yep, um, and then the Hurls are kind of the same as before, where the red fills the role of just being a good starter as a 0 for 3 go again. Um, that can be a zero or a one for four if needed with the unblockable, and then the yellows, kind of best of both worlds, um, while being slightly less powerful. Um, and Benji, it's great because it's a zero for two go again. Um, unblockable if you need it, you can pitch it for like Kadachi, Kadachi plus a zero finisher, um, and then have it later for the unblockable. Yep. It's kind of the same as before. Yeah, one one thing real quick I want to go over about uh, the zero for threes is uh, Ninja is different in this set than it was in Uprising. In Uprising, you kind of wanted to take every zero for three you could get your hands on. Uh, but in this format, um, uh, the zero for threes feel kind of a weird spot um, because the concept of a starter is a little different. Um, specifically, the things like Hurl or Be Like Water that will usually just get blocked by a three block and be end of story. Um, they can be kind of strange. Uh, I find in this format usually uh, three points of value for a card on defense is better than three points of value for a card on offense. Mm -hmm. uh, and so having these cards, I think you want some number, um, but I don't, you know, if, if you just keep getting fed like red uh, Be Like Waters, like I think there is a limit to the number of those cards you want in your deck. Um, because especially against things like Assassin that will just block all of them, um, they can be kind of weak um, and not do a whole lot past decreasing the block value of the cards in your deck. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Like, once you hit the threshold so that you're like, your combos are online often enough, mm -hmm. I think they get way worse. Yeah, yeah. I think I think breakpoints at the same rate are significantly better. Oh yes, totally agree. Okay, so moving on to our finishers category, we've been kind of talking about this a bunch. You want to open with a breakpoint with go again, do some other stuff, Kadachi's whatever, and then finish um, with a big attack at the end. Um, so first we have our zero costs. Um, these are all very different cards. Um, <laughs> Gore belching is like I think pretty reasonable in ninja. Like I, most go ahead. I I hate gore belching. Yeah. <laughs> um I'll explain why in a minute. You can you can go ahead and explain the other things. I'll I'll talk about gore belching in a second. Yeah, like I'm not picking this early by any means. Uh maybe took it for like Azuri and it didn't work out or something. Um I think it's playable, like less so in Katsu, uh because you're like Hoping it'll be a zero for four. It doesn't block, I think, is like the big issue. Um, if you're playing any number of two for six, it gets awkward. If all of your finishers are spring loads, it's pretty good because then, like, your floor is actually zero for three or zero for four. Um, yeah, what do you want to say about it? All right, so cards that don't block suck in Benji. Yeah. So I think Gore Belching in Katsu is pretty weak because, like Dan said, you have things like Surging Strike, Bonds of Ancestry, um, and you'll usually have... You, the power of your deck will usually just be a little bit higher in Katsu because you don't want yellows. Um, and then in Benji, um, blocking two is such a bonus. Uh, one thing that Benji will do a lot of the times in the late game is try to block with three cards mm -hmm. And then attack with an unblockable attack and basically present the question to your opponent. Do you have a brush off or a peace of mind? If not, you're dead. If so, we do it again. I block with three cards, I play an attack. Um, and that's an extremely common loop that Benji will get in. And it's one of his biggest strengths is that 
especially against decks like Riptide or Zuri that have trouble actually pushing damage through blocks. Um, he will often just kill you once you get down to a low life total. Gore Belching doesn't do anything there. And this loop happens like close to 50% of the games. With some Benji decks, it happens almost every game. And so if you don't see Gore Belching in the first half of your deck, if you see it in the second half when you're trying to block and swing attacks, it's terrible. It's so bad because <laughs> no block that doesn't have go again and is blockable. It's just, it's none of the things you want. I think the card is playable. If you get lucky with it, it can even be great. But I think most of the time, it is more of a hindrance than a good thing. And I really only want it if I'm lacking in finishers. Yep, I agree with that. Yeah, I think our, our recommendation is like stay away from this card. But if you need it to kind of fill out your ratio recipe, sure. it's reasonable. And if like it's pack three and you're like, I don't have a single attack that's more than three, yeah, it's sure. still just like yeah. average, but it's. <laughs> It fills the role. Um, by contrast, we have Infectious Host, which is like the best zero the, cost finisher. This is the Dan Rutkowski special from from week zero. Said this card was broken. Oh yeah, no, car, the card's insane. So it's it's zero for four base rated box two. Um, like these decks, the Ninja decks are both happy to play a vanilla zero for four, like the Seek Horizon. Um, but the upside of copying uh, the tokens from the set is just insane. Like, there's it's often enough you can probably get six value out of it. It lets you like choose to not block things to get um, tokens, and like you're not really losing value. You're just kind of yeah. It, it even. like eliminates the weakness that Benji has, or that that uh, Ninja has of. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're weak because you can't block as well, so your opponent's on hits are better. This makes your opponent cards basically just not have on hits. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think the best counterplay to Benji is like presenting frailty, and like if you have like you can block a couple cards and go like I don't know, surging into um like a twin twister and then end with infection host all from hand. Like they just lost the game. <laughs> Yeah, like that's it's just so, such a blowout because they like probably did a lot to set up their um their frailty to hit, and then you're like, yeah, I don't care, <laughs> you can have this back. Yep. Yeah, the cards the cards ridiculous. I don't know. I don't say its floor is like an above average card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and its ceiling is just like looking for a scrap rate, but better. Like like it, like it's it's like the opposite of looking for a scrap rate. It's just it's. Mm -hmm. It's one point more, and it costs one less. Like that's that's ridiculous. Agreed. Uh, so next in that category, Seek Horizon. It's like pretty reasonable card. It's at the same floor, right? It's a zero for four. We're happy to play mm -hmm. those. Um, I don't think the go again comes up super often, but it's nice to have on there. Um, I think one of the things I like best is that it makes your yellow zeros pretty good. Like lets you go Kadachi Kadachi four. Which is usually too unblockable, and then probably chipping with the seek as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You have any other uses for it? No, I think uh, I think it's the worst. Um, like I think the the text is worst in Ninja because you're really not lacking for go again. Yeah. But I think having a zero for four finisher is arguably best in Ninja. So I think it's kind of balances out. I think the cards. Uh, Pretty good, and the fact that the card is good even more just showcases how broken looking for a scrap is. Oh yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, this next pile got a little messed up. So next we have our two cost finishers. Um, I think in general mm -hmm. you you don't actually want these. Um, you want zero and one cost finishers. That said, these are like extremely playable and fill yeah, actually... your finisher quota. Yeah, I actually think these cards can be quite strong sometimes. Um, I think there are there, there's two archetypes of Katsu. Mm -hmm. um, there's the archetype that just plays all the combo cards and just plays bonds and goes crazy. Um, but then there's also like this kind of weird deck where if the combo cards don't work out, 
if you just get like a lot of three blocks and a lot of these like two for sixes, you can try to play this game where you go for a value approach. Um, where you just play like two card sevens, where you just go Kadachi into one of these. Um, and it's like pretty reasonable. Um, also, there's uh, uh, additional bonus points with some of these cards in Benji because your hero power can make them higher power. So things like Amnesia, mm-hmm. Humble, and Destructive Deliberation in particular that have relevant on hits, you can make those attack for like seven or for six, which might be able to like push them over the line uh, and get you additional value off of the hit triggers. And that can come up with Wreck Havoc as well, but that's much harder to actually get value out of that one. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with these is like being aware of your current finisher counts and then also being aware of like your resource curve. Um, like I think you mentioned earlier, like if you have two surgings, like these go down in value a bit. Um, oh, they're terrible surgings. Say again. I said, yeah, they're they're terrible with surgings. Yeah. They're, they're... Um, but if you have like no surgings in deck and like you're reasonably expecting to like most start most turns with a zero, like maybe fifty percent of the time on one. Like it's these are quite good. Um, like you said, if you have a lot of three blocks, they go up in value because now you can trade like three on defense, go Kodachi yeah. plus one of these, and then set a card, which is really strong. Yeah, Ninja, yeah, Ninja basically can't, for, usually has a really hard time uh, playing like small hands, and these are pretty reasonable small hands. Yeah. Um, one thing about these cards that is kind of like anti-synergy and why they're, they can be quite weak in Ninja is, like I, I, I keep bringing this up, but Kodachi is letting you convert extra resources to damage. Mm-hmm. Um, these costing two versus one, is a lot of time a non-bow um, because if you had a one cost finisher that attacked for one less you could just convert that extra resource into that damage anyway through kadachi mm-hmm. um, there aren't a whole lot of actual one for fives right they're basically just the bombs so these will often be worth more value but they're so much less flexible than the one cost finishers um, and a lot of the time, they present the same number of actual damage than the one-cost finishers. Um, mm-hmm. so it, a lot of the time, they're the same number of damage, but they're just a lot less flexible, which makes me pretty low on most of them. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I think it's pretty common to, like, unless you have exactly a two-card hand, to not use Kadachis on turns where you're playing these two-cost cards, which is, like, not exactly what you want to be doing. Yeah, you're basically just, like sacrificing flexibility for nothing yeah. or i guess they get triggered on these cards right yeah, like, yeah. No, they, like these cards in a bubble are all, also all just like pretty good like yeah. every yeah. deck will play play these if they get them yeah i think uh i think humble is the best of the the two block just want to just want to put that out there i think of the ones that block two i think humble is the highest mm-hmm. i agree <clears throat> okay, so moving on to our one cost finishers. We already talked about spring load and looking for a scrap. Um, yellow spring load yellow. is obviously not a high pick, but it fills the role. Um, you'd prefer probably not to play it, but it is like completely reasonable, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, acts as a one for four, unblockable, still if you need it in Benji. Still has yeah. the Benji oh, synergy. Yeah, it's yeah fine. being a yellow. Yeah, being a yellow light comes up as well, right? Yep. It's like Agreed. a red raid, almost. Um, um, yeah, freewheeling's weird. Yeah, um, I think a lot of people are not as high on this card as we might be. Yeah, it. I think this is one of the examples where it's a card that you can put in both decks, but it's so much better in Katsu than it is in Benji. Um. Benji and Katsu have, like, opposite ways of... Like, their play patterns are the same, but the way your opponent blocks is usually so different. Mm -hmm. Katsu, your opponent wants to block early to prevent you from getting value out of your hero power. Um, But then Benji usually does not let your opponent block early because you're attacking unblockable attacks. So they're, like, thrilled to see this at the end. Yeah, if they see this at the end, it's like, wow, I was going to block anyway because I needed to block um, to get value out of my hand. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas with Katsu, 
they were like, well, I already blocked with all the cards I want to block with, and now there's this one for six coming in at me that I, you know, almost have to block uh, to get value out of my cards, um, which will usually get you extra value. So it's playable in both, but I am much more excited about putting this card in a Katsu deck than a Benji deck. Yep, I think that's a good take. I'd probably take Yellow Spring Load, based on what you're saying, over Free Willing for Benji. Yep. yep. Yeah, the, the Benji synergy is real. Yep, that makes sense to me. Um, but it's also, it's just like a nice one-cost finisher that typically you can get pretty late. Um, I am perfectly happy putting it in Benji. I, don't, I want to clarify oh, yeah. that. Like, man, no, if, no, if this I'm card wheels in on Benji, I'm like yeah, ecstatic. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's great. Yeah. All right. Uh, zero cost finishers. So these are, sorry, these are zero cost finishers that block for three. So we, we've said it a few times. Like you're just gonna play every three block you have in your ninja deck. Um, and these are totally reasonable. They have, if you played a head yeah. jab, your opponent is now incentivized to block. If you're Benji and your head jab hit, or your last attack hit, yeah, head jab. Um, now they really need to block, and you're presenting a break breakpoint, or you're getting additional value. Um, yeah, these, these cards are pretty important actually in Katsu as well. Um, I think attacking with them is better in Benji because, like you said, Benji gives them plus one, which makes them a breakpoint. Um, but in Katsu, in order to turn on Bonds of Ancestry, you get you need to get some number of these cards in your graveyard, and so having the red ones in your deck to be able to search off of your big Bonds turns is pretty important if you want to have like a Bonds deck. Yeah, great point. Uh, back heel kick is kind of cute with Benji. If you do a yellow twin twister, giving your next attack plus one, and right. Benji triggers, it's now a zero for seven. Zero for seven is pretty good. I don't know about agreed, you. I'm, agreed. Uh, <laughs> like three card eleven. Yep. If, you, if you swing your Kadashis, which is, I think I pulled weird. that off exactly once. Uh, I've done it a few times. Okay. Um, I haven't had I the it, like opportunity often, but. Yeah, red red back heel kicks surprisingly is a pretty high pick for a lot of ninja players. They'll take it over uh probably better cards. Um but like if you get them, like that's a very real thing. Um it also makes things like Mask of Many Faces better in Benji. Um because like I said earlier, you can just convert one resource to two damage, which is probably fine. Yeah, seems good. Yeah, seems good. Okay, and now for the last of the kind of cards that are good for both heroes, we have Peace of Mind Keep and Brush Off. Um, these are kind of your like defensive tools outside of your three blocks. Um, Peace of Ooh, Mind, yeah. I'm sure most people know, is like great to pair with one piece of Seeker's equipment. So you're pitching a blue, you're blocking five and getting a ponder. It's a pretty good rate. Yeah, um, basically. What were you saying? Basically a one card five in that situation. Yeah, which is super good. Um, how do you like to use these brush offs, or are they really just uh, counter picks so your your Benji um, doesn't get blocked? Yeah. So uh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna talk a little bit about peace of mind as yeah. well. Um, so peace of mind uh, is, I think, pretty bad in Katsu um, because, like I said, Katsu wants to play big hands. Typically, typically three to four card hands. And peace of mind, while it is kind of a one card five, your hand really typically only gets full value if you can play all of it. Um, and peace of mind does not let you play all of it. Um, I think it's fine in Benji because you're more happy to play two card hands, but I'm still not ecstatic about it. And I definitely don't want any peace of minds past one red. Um, but I think it is fine in both decks, but I'm not looking for it super highly. Uh, the brush-offs are kind of strange. Um, I think it is very real in Benji to hate draft them, but I wouldn't take them over like playable cards usually. Um, I will say the number of brush-offs in your opponent's deck is huge in Benji um, because it can it's often the difference between you winning the game and you losing the game um so like removing one brush off from the pod with it's like entirely possible that you'll just win an extra game because somebody won't have that against you mm -hmm. um 
I'm also perfectly fine taking yellow and red brush off if I think or know that there is another Benji in the pod. Um, because I think they're phenomenal in the mirror. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think red brush off is just a good playable in every deck in this format. I think I am happy putting one, maybe two in my deck in some matchups because it negates things like um, uh, Razor's Edge, the Spike With cards. Um, and then if your opponent is playing an arrow heavy Azalea deck, it is fine as well. Because if they don't pump their arrow, but it's just like six dominate, you can uh, you can block it. Oh yeah, red brush off's just a block three against Rangers because they have to do all of their damage face up. Yep. There's no reactions that they have access to. Yeah, I think red brush off is fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm not trying to say it's good. It's it is yeah. it is okay. Yeah, it's perfectly reasonable. Um, yeah. Would you hate pick yellow and blue peace of mind in the same kind of regard um, for Benji? So peace of mind is actually very different than brush off. Um, one common thing that'll happen with Benji is, like I was saying earlier, you get into that end game where you're trying to kill them, and most heroes, in order to actually like take your whole hand, which is what they're trying to do, they'll need a three to four card hand. Uh, usually a three card hand is what'll do it if you're at one or two life. Um, your assassin can go spider's bite, take a card, um, and then, you know, play an attack, whether it's Arachne or Azuri, usually they can take three cards because your deck blocks so poorly. Um, but I'm not really worried about a two card hand killing me. So if I get into that end game loop and they peace of mind my unblockable attack, that's fine. I can probably just block with three cards against their two card hand and then throw another unblockable attack against them uh, next turn. Um, so, yeah. Also, if they're peace of minding you like mid game, then they're not getting full value out of their peace of mind because they're blocking a two attack. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, that's perfectly reasonable as well. So I'm I'm not super keen on hate picking blue and yellow peace of minds. Uh, I. If I could make all of my opponents put five yellow pieces of in their deck, I would do it. Like No, like I completely I, agree. That was my take as well. I like I cards. purposely don't take them hoping that people will hate pick the piece of minds yeah. to play yeah. them against my Benji. Yes. That, yeah, I think awesome. the the difference between brush off and piece of mind is like huge. Like brush off's <laughs> insane <laughs> against Benji where piece of mind's like I think it's actively like bad for you. <laughs> Yeah, like I guess if you can hit like a yellow deadly duo, then you can get your full four points of value. Good yep. job. Otherwise, you're probably not getting a whole lot of value. Yep, agreed. Okay, so now let's talk about specific cards for just Benji. Um, kind of. Kind um, of, kind of, yeah. yeah. There's always overlap, but these are like, yeah, perform a bit better for Benji. Yeah, yeah. Specifically, I think the back heel kick, one two punch, and recoil yellows are yeah. cards that I'm super happy putting in Katsu, but they're in the Benji category because they they fill two different roles in Benji. Whereas in Katsu, they're just like block threes that cost zero that you can discard to Katsu or Kadachis. Yep, agreed. Um, yeah, I don't think we have to go too deep on these. Like they're they block three, great. They attack for two, which is unblockable, great. And they have synergies um, if you have the, the starters. Yep. For they, uh, yeah, Benji's like role of uh, zero cost two attacks are pretty important on turn zero and in the end game when you're trying to kill your opponent. So if you could have cards that are good on turn zero and in the end game and they block three in the mid game, like like that's pretty great. Like those those cards are sweet. Yeah, not the like super super high picks, but they're like the bread and butter. I feel like. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, also, like if they're wheeling, like you can probably, you know, see that there's you know not a whole lot of Benji at the table. Agreed. And then, Agreed. Uh, yeah. yeah. Do we want to talk about this ominous yellow feisty locals? Yep. Real quick. Take it away. Yeah. So yellow feisty locals serves the same role as the cards to the right of it, where it's zero for two that is really good on turn zero and is really good in the end game. But unlike those cards, the number in the bottom right is not very good. Um, I will admit, I don't really know how to evaluate this card. Um, It is great late, and it's great turn zero. 
And outside of that, it's basically the worst card in your deck. Yeah, um, the use case I think of is if you move into Ninja Late and you need playables, this is like... Yeah. You're still happy but, to play this card? Um, yeah, it's a reasonable playable. Um, one, one thing we didn't mention in the beginning, though, like a huge benefit to drafting Ninja is that you're playing 30 cards every game. Yep. So yep. you get a lot of flexibility to... Um, like spec on other classes, or hey, pick mm -hmm. those brush offs, or yes, do do whatever you gotta do because um, you're not gonna play every card you draft anyway. Um, so I think it's... I think top two wants a couple more than thirty cards in in a lot of matchups, but yeah, that's fair. That's fair. You definitely don't need like thirty eight cards or whatever. Yeah, like Ranger, yeah. Fine. You have more flexibility to like how you wanna manipulate the draft. Yep. Another advantage that a uh, ninja in general, but Benji specifically has, is um, I am I am on the train that every hero wants to go second in this format, um, but ninja goes first better than the other classes. Um, Benji specifically, uh, I still want to go second with most Benji decks. Um, there are some Benji decks like if you have a pretty bad deck where your deck is basically only unblockable cards. Mm -hmm. um, like I think I might want to go first there, yeah. But if I have like a pretty red heavy Benji deck, I can still usually leak somewhere from two to four damage turn zero, um, which is more than basically every other class can do on turn zero. So like the worst case for Ninja going first is just leagues better than every other class going first. Um, also, your arsenal is I think more important in Ninja than any other class. Yes, that includes Ranger. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, I, I think that's just another uh, reason that Ninja is so strong. Yeah, I agree. What's your, your record for turn zero damage you've done as Benji? Uh, well, Alan Lau played against me in round 10. Okay. Uh, Pro Tour Baltimore. And he was playing Azuri, and he made me go first. And I went uh, Yellow Be Like Water yep. for two. And then I went blue head jab for two, and then I played a yellow one two punch. And he did not have any brush offs, so he took eight damage and went to 12 on turn zero. Yep, I assume so you won that, that game. Yes, I, I won that game a couple. <laughs> so, yep. yeah, no <laughs> other class can do that. No other class can have a power turn on turn zero. Agreed. Like, My record is nine it. damage. So I did an armory. Oh, no, it was a skirmish. Yeah, and it's just it like. Is. You can't win, because like, Benji's is going to present lethal every turn after that. Yeah. Especially if you're playing like Assassin. Yeah. Or like Riptide. Like, you, just, you just don't have comeback mechanics. Um, and so, yeah, it's pretty disgusting. Agreed. Okay, so next we have kind of our Benji power cards, if you will. Um, Deadly Duo is yeah. kind of like the obvious one. Most of your deck is base twos. Um, these being unblockable, the red, if you pair with Silken Gi. Yeah. Um, giving your next attack yeah, effectively plus three with the Benji ability is kind of absurd. Yeah, I don't want the red in not Silken Gi decks. I want to clarify that. I, I don't want that card if I'm... Yeah, it's like barely I playable, I think, without Silken Gi. Yeah, it's it's only good... If you don't have Silken Gi, it's only good if you can exactly go unblockable attack, trigger Benji, attack with it for four, yeah. and your opponent doesn't have an armor. Yeah, it, it's like it's pretty narrow. Yeah, it'd have to be short playables to put in my deck, I think. It's like one of the cards I, I see myself cutting pretty often. Yep, it's also like a two-block red yep. that you don't really want to play. Like, it's 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 a very narrow card. Yep, uh, Be Like Water, Yellow. Hedge Up Yellow is kind of in this category, too, but it's Hedge Up's also just good for Katsu, I think. Be Like Water mm -hmm. kind of is, too. They should probably be together. Um, yeah. Uh, I think Be Like Water specifically is better in Benji because oh for sure the unblockable yeah. with the hit effect. Yeah. Mm. It's like he head jab is pretty similar in both decks because um, you're guaranteed the name either way, so your combo like happens either way. But yep. Be Like Water like only happens if it hits, and Benji's better at letting it hit. Agreed. Okay. Yeah, Be Like Water is just a great way to turn on your combo cards. Um, plunge is like okay. It's a one for two go again. So like having a block wall with go again is great. This is how you do like the big turn zero plays. Lets you like close out games early. Um, because 
Yeah, it's like a two guard six, right? Um, because you can go Kadachi, plunge, and then Kadachi for three. Which, like, two card sixes are fine, mm -hmm. but Ninja specifically doesn't want them because you're probably not blocking six uh, with your other two cards. Yeah. Um, so you're probably not getting a good turn. Yeah. But... So, we talked about earlier how, like, you're incentivized to block Kadachis against Benji, and, like, you're just, like, making their Kadachi block better when the plunge hits, usually. Yep. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty low on plunge, but I'm putting them in my deck if I get them, because, like you said, they're good on turret zero, they can help close out the game, they're they're very versatile. Yep, I agree. Um, Yellow Twin Twisters is the nice, flexible card. Um, the floor is kind floor of is, low. So it's Yellow Plunge as a floor. Yeah, without the hit trigger, potentially. It has the hit trigger, it's, it's next attack, this combat chain. Yeah, but the Twin Twisters has to hit, right? Like, I was saying, if this gets rushed off and you did the, the plus one, it's, oh, like, it's a little sad. Yeah. It's still, like, fine. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying the, the floor of the card is the same as Yellow Plunge. Like, they're they're the same sure, card sure. Yeah. when you don't. But when you have Back Heel Kick, though. Yeah, it's the, the upside cool. with Back Heel Kick, the red, it lets you do... Yeah, very yeah, good value it. there. Yeah. Um, It's also nice for, like... Yeah, it's just pretty good. Um, I think I usually prefer the red twins just to like guarantee the, the one for four to start. But this is a very solid card, I think, in Benji. Yeah. Any yeah one one kind of thing that's like about like ninja is you you just want to build your own like good rates, right? I know I keep joking about like build your own looking for a scrap or build your own scar for a scar, but like things like twin twister that let you build your own. Yep. like really strong rate are important in ninja because you do need to go over the top a little bit because you you don't block very well yep great point um along those lines we have short and sharp and feisty locals so benji inherently has a blockable attacks um these are like additional ways to do um like evasive damage or like hard to deal with damage to help get you closer to the breakpoint where your opponent is basically in Benji lock where they have to respect every Kadachi or they just die to an unblockable too. Yep. Yeah, Feisty Locals specifically is pretty sweet because if all your attacks that come before it are either Kadachis or unblockable attacks, um, if the only thing that they can block their whole turn is Feisty Locals, that's that's amazing because uh, pretty much every deck in this format wants to block with at least one card per hand. Uh, and so if they if they want to block with a card and you present Feisty Locals at the end of a chain, it's basically just 0 for 5, which is amazing. Yep, agreed. Okay. And then... Uh, yeah, Short and Sharp also gives Counterplay to brush off, which is awesome. Oh yeah, that's like the, the highest upside of it. If, if you land this on a brush off, it's such a blowout. Especially if you're hitting with something like a yellow deadly duo or a, a be like water or something. Yeah, yeah. The card has yeah. a lot of utility in, in Benji. Mm -hmm. All right. And kind of like flick knife is just another way to increase oh, sure. your, your their you know or decrease their life total. Yeah. Uh, so we actually yeah. don't have too many Katsu specific cards. Um, it's basically just the bonds line that we're kind of saying like Benji doesn't want to do this. Um, you probably do play. The bonds in your deck, yeah. because I'm, they block them. Yeah, they are um, better than come to fight. Or sorry, they are a little worse than come to fight. Um, but they are still three blocks. I I will take them and I will block with them, and it will be fine. Uh, I have also pitched a blue card to attack with the blue bonds of ancestry before in Benji and dealt two damage to my opponent. Yep, yeah, yeah. makes sense. And come on. Um, but yeah, they're quite good in Katsu. Um, I think opinions are somewhat varied. Some people think it's like the best card possible for Katsu. Um, if you pull off the combo, it's pretty insane. That's why we have the yellow surging here. It's also just a great break point to start with to represent the Katsu ability. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think we already talked a bit about the combo. Like it's important to have your, your three block combo cards in some number of reds to tutor, and then some number of blue and yellow to block with. Yep. I think 
I will say, I think we were all kind of low on Katsu like combo deck at the start of the format. Mm-hmm. Um, and even towards the end. Um, it is my opinion that Benji is usually better and is usually more open. Um, but I think Katsu can do more powerful things than the rest of the format. Yep. Um, and even you can kind of like cheat with Katsu. Um, not like actually cheap, but like <laughs> you can play things like even if you don't get the bonds, um, Surging Strike is like a must block, and Descending Gust Wave feels like a must block. So you can do these cheeky things where you come in with like, you know, your your terrible like two for fourth go against Surging Strike, and your opponent like gives you two cards, and then you come in with your Descending Gust Wave, and then your opponent feels like they're forced to give you their other two cards, even if you don't have you know any bonds in your deck still. Um, so, like, I think there's power mm-hmm. to Atsu outside of just always hitting with your stuff and or drawing the bonds combo and nattying it and going crazy. Um, also, the three life uh, can matter. Um, yep. Because the biggest thing that, like, Benji does to make up for the three life is have unblockable damage. Um I think uh, some people think that Benji makes up for it with his second line of text that gives you the plus one. I think it's important to realize that doesn't actually make up for it usually, because all your cards are behind rate by one. So that card is just... Or that, that line of text like evens that out. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the unblockable attacks like the real power. But Katsu just has 20 life. So your deck is all red cards and blue cards. Like, Katsu's great. Yeah, it's funny. My like um, heuristic is like, the better my card quality is, the more I want to play Katsu. Yep. yep. Um, yeah. Uh, before we finish, do you want to go over like any majestics, like the the blue zeros? Like, do you want to go over which ones are better, or do you think they're all pretty close? Um. Yeah. If you want to, for me, it's kind of like I know we have stab wound as like a bomb and Benji. Yeah, um, I think. I think the other ones are. It's just the fact good. that they all block three and are non attacks. Like, mm-hmm. I'm taking them highly regardless of what the ability is. Mm-hmm. Fair. Yeah, I agree. I think Stab Wound in Benji is the best one. But yeah, the other ones are at all pretty close. If you can resolve a Concealed Blade and Limited, you, uh, you're you uh, a gamer, I guess. Yeah. Good job. It's quite good. It. So when you're drafting, how do you usually decide if you're going Benji or Katsu during the draft? Um, so I think, actually, it, in order to understand how which hero you're going, it's important to understand why you're playing Ninja. Um, I think that if you are playing Ninja because you didn't want to send anti-Ninja signals earlier, and you just, you know, you're, you're pretty high on Ninja, and you just want to take Ninja cards early, I think Benji is probably the best way to go. Mm-hmm. Um, like I was alluding to earlier, the Benji floor is still pretty high because since all of your attacks are unblockable, if you're playing against a weaker deck that relies on blocking to get all of its value, you can kind of just play this game where you block with a few cards and throw unblockable attacks every turn, and you'll be able to like snipe some wins. Mm-hmm. Um, and if there's like the risk of other people being on Ninja in the pod, then I'm pretty high on Benji because I think you need a lot less for Benji to go right. Um, because you can steal wins much easier, and I think Benji is just a slightly better hero in a vacuum. But if you're playing Ninja because you got past like really good Ninja cards, and you you know you're seeing surging strikes and descending gust waves, you think you might be the only Ninja or the only Katsu. I think Katsu is much better than Benji because I think his ceiling is much higher. Um, and he still gets most of the advantages that Benji does, um, or specifically most of the advantages that an average Benji deck does. Um, and you can kind of ignore the floor because if you're the only ninja, you're you're not hitting the floor, right? You're you're shooting for the ceiling that the class can can get you to. Um, and I think Katsu is the higher ceiling. Yeah. What do you think? No, I totally agree. That makes sense to me. Um, last thing. I think we should talk about what is kind of the high level um like formula you're looking to complete for your benji deck yeah uh you want me to read off the thing sure. <laughs> <laughs> um so 
I think uh, there, there's, I mean, we have all these categories, right? We have finishers, blues. Um, so I think all of these things are like the, the things you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, you have your zero cost blues. Um, ideally, you have somewhere from six to ten. Um, I think you want to push around eight or nine. If your deck is a little more resource hungry, I'm perfectly happy having ten. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think if you could, you would have every single one of your blue cards block three. Um, I think that the block three outweighs the utility of the go again ones. Um, I want as many blue block threes as I can get. <clears throat> um, then I think you usually want somewhere from five to ten red cards. Uh, and this is for Benji specifically. Sorry if I didn't go. I'm gonna go over Benji and then Katsu. I think you want somewhere between five to ten reds, where you have enough reds so that you can get through the uh, the early and middle game. Uh, unblockable damage is great, but if it's all behind rate, you're never going to get to the situation where your opponent's dead because you're just going to get run over. So you do need some number of reds to actually kill your opponent and get them low. Um, I think you don't want too many, though, uh, because if you have too many reds, I think you should just be in Katsu. Um, and then I think you want somewhere between 8 to 15 yellows. Um, you want a large number of unblockable attacks because you want the first couple turns, or sorry, the first turn and the last couple turns to be um, filled with unblockable damage. Um, the worst feeling in Benji is when you put your opponent to two and, you know, they can only take three cards from your hand and then you draw up and you don't have an unblockable attack. Um, and then they just kill you in a few turns. It's really important to be able to have unblockable attacks late game. Um, the next thing that you need, like some number of, is three blocks. Um, I think you you need as many as you can get reasonably. Um, there's a limit to anything, but I think it's pretty unlikely that you'll get more than like 12 or 13 three blocks in your deck. Um, I think that's probably approaching the limit. If I have 15 three blocks, I'm probably looking for other cards. But I think you, you want at least eight. Um, if you have eight, you're probably fine. But like we've been talking about this whole time, they're so important. The biggest and you know most glaring issue with ninja is that your your cards don't all block three. So if if you if your deck can block three every turn and can also have good cards, like you're just the best class. Um, and then yeah, I think everything else is kind of. Uh, you know, similar. I think the the finishers fall under the red category most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there's anything I missed. Um, no, yeah. that sounds about right. What about for Katsu? Uh, I think that one's a little more straightforward, right? Yeah. Um, I think in your ideal Katsu deck, you don't have any yellows. <laughs> your deck is all Agreed. red. Yep. Um, I think Katsu wants a couple more blues. I think you want um, somewhere from like eight to twelve. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, ideally all zero cost, but I think Katsu is more willing than Benji to play a couple non-zero cost blues. Things like blue head jet or blue uh, come to fight, blue bonds are fine because yep. you will you know swing things like surging strike. Um, I think after that, everything you want to just be like reds. Um, I think building the formula for Katsu is kind of weird because every Katsu deck is different. Um, Oh, you disconnected. Um, all of the uh, Katsu decks will be a little different, right? You know, some Katsu decks will have, you know, five or six surging strikes, and then some will have two surging strikes, and those decks will play very differently. And so I think, you know, your number of finishers um, will be kind of directly opposite to your number of surgings and, and starters and things like that. Yeah, makes sense. Yep. All right, I think we can probably call it there. I hope everyone feels more confident and excited to draft Ninja at their RTNs. We'll be putting out similar style videos for uh, Ranger and Assassin as well. Um, If this video helped or you just enjoyed it, please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. 
big thanks to to Lucas for joining us here. Do you have anything you want to plug, Lucas? Uh, not really. Uh, if you want to find me, you can find me at uh, Achilles. Uh, I think it's two o three two on Twitter. Um, but yeah, I mean, nothing else. Ninja's great. Draft Ninja. Agreed. All right, thanks, man. Catch uh, catch you guys later, YouTube. Yep.